Bruchim Aboim. This evening, we are going to deal with a, uh, a difficult topic, pain. And um, I guess it's a silly question, but is pain good or is pain bad? Uh, the obvious answer would be uh, pain. I mean, who wants pain? Something that we don't enjoy. So I guess one would think that it's bad, but I contend that's not the case. So number one is, what's the origin of pain? So our rabbis tell us that our forefathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, at, made three requests. The first person to be called a zuckain, an old person, was Abraham Ravino. He requested to old age um, because he was, uh, there was a, a question of whether he was the father of Yitzchak, his son. Uh, she, his wife, Sarah, had been taken into the harem of Abimelech. And he was already an older man, 100 when his son was born. So God made a miracle that the two of them looked like twins, which created certain difficulties. And uh, this way, God gave him the ability to be the first one that looked old. It also tells a person to get their life together, that the clock is ticking. It's also a crown of glory, the gray hairs. So these gray hairs and wrinkles, the gray hair for other people, the wrinkles for you to look and know you don't have forever to get it together. Yitzhak was the first person who asked God for pain. He was a tough individual. No nonsense. And why? Because he felt that when a person has pain, it makes him focus on that which is real. And not only that, it makes him realize he's not God because he can't control that. And we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, spiritual benefits. Yaakov was the first one. Jacob was the first one to ask for a deathbed experience. He's the first person we see that gets sick and then dies. So even though Yitzhak asked for pain, sickness. But that sickness did not bring about death, just discomfort. So, again, so is it good or bad? So there are, what physically... Even though it hurts, really there's a lot of benefits to pain. Uh, imagine if someone put their hand into a fire. If you didn't feel pain, you would leave your hand in the fire. Since you feel pain, you automatically knee-jerk reaction, you pull your hand right back. If someone broke their leg. Without pain, they would continue to walk on that pain, on that leg, to the point of becoming crippled. Uh, rather than just having a broken leg that can be fixed, mended, and actually be better than you, because when a bone um, remends after a break, it's even stronger than it was before it was broken. Um, again, the uh, lifestyle. Many times a person finds himself getting very sick, uh, feeling a lot of pain, discomfort, uh, ulcers, all these things tell a person he's working, he's worrying too much, needs to change his lifestyle, his eating habits, uh, things that in the end benefit him even though they may seem like a negative. In reality, pain on a physical level is the body alerting you to the fact that something's not right. So it's really not a negative. If you didn't feel the pain, you wouldn't go to a doctor, you wouldn't take medicine, you wouldn't get cured. What you would do is either hurt yourself or die. So on a physical level, though we don't want it, it is really an indicator to us that something is not right. When things are going right, you don't feel it. If your toe isn't hurting, you don't know you have a toe. The only time you know you have a toe is when it has a pain. And that's what pain is for, to let us know that there's something we need to fix. On a spiritual level, uh, there's no atheist in a foxhole. So what Yitzchak requested, what he wanted... His, contention, his, his concern was not so much physical. His concern was spiritual. That when a person feels good and everything's running well, the truth of the matter is that God's not the first thing you think about. In fact, if anything, maybe the last or maybe never. But the second that a person gets sick, it's interesting that doctors will tell you, I've done all I can, now it's in God's hands. The truth is it's in God's hands from Jump Street. Uh, Socrates said that the doctor keeps a patient company while God does his miracles. And God really set up the body to take care of itself. So holistic medicine is all about that. 
trying to step out of the way and let the body do what it's supposed to do, and it does. So, on a spiritual level, it's interesting, we have a prayer, the eighth prayer in the uh, standing prayer of the Shimon Esri, that is a request for good health. Uh, I really try to pray with concentration, but the, you can't compare praying when you're healthy to praying when you're sick. When a person is sick, the truth is that you concentrate much more and your, and your prayers are much deeper than you try to make that connection with God on a much higher level. But really, uh, we pray every day to be well because it's easier to ask God to move a pebble than a boulder. So what the, what the, prayer, what the pain does, in a, in a sense, is cre- creates a relationship between you and God. And what God does with us is gives us wake-up calls. He really just, as we mentioned many times, God wants to be relevant. He wants to be a part of your life. He also wants you to get it together. And much like a parent, he uh, gives you little warnings, little slaps sometimes to make you wake up, to make you realize that you need to be better at life, that you need to be more spiritual. You need to to concentrate on things that are more relevant, more godly, more important than the pleasures and the tri- 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 trivialities of life. The it's interesting that in uh, the Seder of Akev, in the Book of Devarim, there are two verses. One of them says, In fact, the first one I should be first is ki. ki uh, that Kasher Yasser Ish Espino, just like a man, rebukes his son, chastises him. Hashem Lokecha Mesorecha, the God also chastises you. Why? Again, in order that he might give you pain and test you so that, the, so that it'll be, you'll be good in the end. God does not give you pain for nothing. When you have pain, there's a reason for it, and it's to make you better. It's for you to realize that somehow, some way, where you're going is not the right place. And just like a parent, you know, we as parents want our children to like us. But sometimes we're so involved, so concerned about them liking us, that we forget to be parents. I remember when I was my daughter one time, I did something with her. And with venom, she said to me, I will hate you for the rest of my life. And my answer to her was, I'll deal with it. Because it's not a popularity contest. And a lot of, to a lot of parents it is, but not to God. Parenting means to accept the responsibility and the difficult decisions that have to be made. And sometimes those are painful. But even more painful to the parent who gives them to the child. And I believe so for God. It's not God's intent to give us pain, it's just the opposite. If you look at the tocha, at the admonitions, those what people call the curses, it begins with the blessings. That God wants to give us only good. But meanwhile, we put ourselves in a position where he has no choice. You know, if someone is about to step into traffic, you're going to reach out and you're going to grab him if you want to save his life. And you're not just going to grab him gently. You're going to grab him to the point of where it may actually hurt him. Because you need to pull him back. And if you don't grab him firmly, even if he break a bone, Just to save him from going into a car and being killed, it's worth it. So the pain that we feel in life is really a wake-up call. It is really God trying to alert us to the fact that we're not moving in the right direction. Not only that, um, it's interesting. Pain, just for the sake of pain, makes no sense. But somehow, someway, God created the world that pain is part of the equation. Uh, look at the birth of a child. We believe in circumcision on the eighth day of a child's birth. And an interesting halacha, law, I mean, we're even concerned about Tsar Bali Chaim not giving an animal pain. And yet, the law is that this eight year old boy, cannot, eight day old boy, cannot be anesthetized. No anesthetic. When we get our teeth drilled or whatever, going for surgery, going for surgery. <laughs> After it's over, he goes, hey, when are they going to start? You don't even know it happened. And yet this baby cannot get an anesthetic. Why? What did the baby do? 
And the thing becomes that God, from, from the time a child is born, even when he's eight days old, God wants him to know that in this world, no pain, no gain. That if you want something in this world, if you want to be successful, things do not necessarily come easily. And when they come easily, you need to figure out where they really come from. Because most things that come easy come from the side of evil, not the side of good. When a person pushes, and a per it's interesting, if you ask a person to define their life for you, they're not going to tell you about the everyday good things that happen. It's those difficult situations that they, may, that they work through, that they were successful with, that they tell you about. That's what life's about. Look at a woman who, goes into, goes, who gets pregnant, and then labor, and then the birth. In fact, there's a law that says that she has to bring a sin offering because while she's going through the delivery, she says, I'm never doing this again. I'm not having sex again for the rest of my life. I and mean, this, this is ridiculous. But then she holds that baby. Somehow she has another baby. Because it's the pain, when it's done, that's a pain that's worth having because the results are worth it. Imagine a person who goes into a health club, hires a trainer, and walks out barely sweating and didn't feel anything. It was very comfortable. You fire the trainer because no pain, no gain. Why, what you went there for was to push yourself. And that's what he's supposed to do. Push you further than you want to do. I work out every day. But it's funny, I never took a trainer. And then someone bought me a few sessions. And I realized that as hard as I thought I worked out when I was with a trainer, I worked out much harder. And the results were much better. And God, if you, were, if you will, is a spiritual trainer. God pushes us beyond our, what we think is our limits. And it's not our limits. We're not even close to it. You know, it's interesting. When I go skiing, if you take an instructor, all of a sudden you're skiing in places you'd never go yourself. But because you have an instructor, you're able to, all of a sudden to ski it. It's, he's not the one making you ski it or let, allowing you to. What he's doing for you is making you realize your potential. And what we do is baby ourselves. Pain is something that means that we're getting to the limits, that we're putting ourselves where we need to be, going a little bit further. And that's what life's about. Triumph means to try with a little more oomph. That's what the Olympics is about. Someone pushing a little bit more, just reaching to get a little bit further. So the truth of the matter becomes that if you're not feeling any difficulty in life, that means to say you're really not pushing yourself. That means you're not coming close to your potential. What life's about is a person not reaching his potential, but exceeding his potential. And that's why we bless a, a boy on Friday night with the blessing, the woman we bless to be like the mothers of, of Sarah, Rachel, Leah, and um, Rivka, the mothers of Israel. With a boy, we don't bless him to be like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob or, this, or the other brothers. We bless him to be like Ephraim and Manasseh, the sons of Yosef. Because not only did they reach their potential, but in exile, with a silver spoon in their mouth, they became so great they did the impossible. They became two of the tribes of Israel. They did not reach their potential, they exceeded their potential. And that's what life's about. To take that pain and to use it as a building tool for us to exceed our potential, to push harder than we really want to. And in this way, and by doing that, God forces us, helps us as a benevolent father, to go further than we want and to achieve and have that joy of knowing that we've earned our place in the world to come rather than have being given to us as a poor person who's standing on the corner with a cup in his hand out. And again, we need to know that, that when we feel pain, if you do nothing, you feel pain. So why not feel pain of succeeding? Because the joy afterwards is so great knowing that you did something. So if it's going to hurt either way, if it's going to hurt doing nothing, it's going to hurt doing something then why not do something and then feel that joy? And that's what God wants for us to do, to feel that we have done something in this world. And may God continue to give us strength and wisdom to be able to see that. And uh, thank you very much for coming. God bless and have a good night.